We're in DC, we're about 15 blocks from the capital. Is real estate expensive in DC? Real estate's expensive. We were living on the other side of town and we couldn't afford to build and fix up one of the existing row houses. Trying to build on vacant lots is very difficult. There aren't very many vacant lots. And that's one reason DC has started to allow for the construction of new houses on alleys. So we're in an alley in Capitol Hill. It's the like, alley's here? This, this whole thing. Oh, this whole, whole thing, thing is an, is an alley. alley. Oh my God, this empty space. Like what even is this? These are multiple long lots and this is the end of these lots. So we're standing in an alley. There's multiple sort of alley segments within this alley network. And you can see surrounding us are the backs of different houses. So alley lots in DC are challenging to build on because you need to focus on privacy since there's all these different houses that are looking into the backyards. But on the other hand, the houses are protected from the main streets and there's a little bit more of a community feel. So we're definitely closer with our trash collectors than most people. Uh, but we also sort of have this um, natural sort of um, safe space uh, in the middle of the block. And you can hear now maybe like kids play out here. They play touch football and basketball and... So this before was, because I see alley and alley, I mean this was parking lot or what, this what was, was this? This was informal parking lot. So just kind of Oh, just unused gravel, land. weeds, unused land. Okay. It was empty except for a couple mulberries, which we have milled and used in the project. And then about a dozen broken down cars and trash and things like that in between the cars. So bringing alley houses back here to these alleys sort of cleans up the alleys and these lots that aren't being used. It's pretty obvious you've tried something different here. Yeah, so it's essentially a compostable house made with entirely natural materials. Here on the south side and on the east side, we have tulip poplar bark, which is stripped from tulip poplars being felled for plywood. And then on the entire facade, we've cladded in cork, which is a insulative cladding. And then you can see there's still moss and vines and different things that were on the trees that remain on the bark. So they do very little processing to the bark and to the cork. It's a natural manufacturing process and it makes for a material and a product that you can compost afterwards. Bark was used on this continent for millennia. Native Americans had used bark for thousands of years to clad buildings. And then Europeans came and stopped using it. But there's bark cladding on buildings in North Carolina that are over 100 years old and they're in great shape. So a little driveway area. These are black locust pavers. This whole paver area is permeable, so rain just flows down into there and then down into the sewer. This area can be used for parking. Because for... You could, that whole gate opens. Exactly. We can open this thing up and bring a big, bring a car in, but when we don't open it, the people who deliver packages can just come right in and leave them by the front door. Black locust, sort of a weed tree, but it's, it's super hard. So all the framing for the fence, the pavers, and then the framing for the screen porch, it's black locust. And then the fence cladding is sassafras, which is what they make root beer out of. So when it rains, the fence smells like root beer. <laughs> really? uh, and then the logs in the porch are the mulberry that was on the site. So we had them felled and then we milled them and cured them while construction was happening and then slotted them into place. So come on in. We have a friend who's a fantastic carpenter and he makes some doors for us. So it's a pivot door. There's a hinge two fifths of the way over and it allows for a much heavier door than a sort of conventional hinge system would. So we asked him to make a design that from straight on just looks like the simple vertical boards, but then from up close, it looks like the wood is sort of coming alive and pulsing a little bit. Hello. Hello. He's our official greeter. Wow. Okay. Bye, Momo. <laughs> bye bye. So these in between spaces between the house and the fence give us a little bit of privacy and a sort of backyard that we don't otherwise have. Just a little bit of breathing room. Right. Because you don't have a backyard. We don't. Yeah. This is it. Yeah. 
we really wanted the ground floor to feel like it was part of the ground and for the upstairs to feel like it was part of this tree language. So the exterior envelope is BAMCOR. That's this hybrid bamboo wood structural system. And we whitewashed that with milk paint. So that's our exterior envelope. The interior partitions are clad in tulip poplar plywood. So we wanted to use the same wood that we used out with the bark for the cladding. It's difficult to clad walls with plywood instead of drywall, but that's a decision that we made because we wanted the inside to feel as much like a piece of furniture as like a structure. Then for the horizontal surfaces in the house, like ceilings and stair treads, we used maple because maple's denser, a little harder, a little stiffer than poplar. What do you think, Momo? <laughs> yeah? Yeah. <laughs> we built this house with the expectation that we would start a family here, and we wanted to make sure it was as healthy as it could possibly be. We thought that it was crazy for Hannah, during her pregnancy, to not be able to hang out around the construction site. If there are materials that a pregnant woman can't be exposed to during construction, then she shouldn't be living in them, so. Like spray foams and paints and. And fiberglass and all, exactly. And he shouldn't be exposed to and them. And he shouldn't be exposed to it, so Hannah was able to come and help us stuff the walls with sheep's wool insulation, and we really didn't have to worry too much during construction. And it just gives us peace of mind. This wing is a sort of eating wing that's related to the kitchen, kitchen, dining, screen porch. Everything is sort of tight and compact, but it's made to flow from one space to the next and for the use to feel pretty seamless. We tuck some lights up into the beams. So we oversize the beams and um, open them up and that way we could tuck these LED strip lights in and the goal with the house in general was to have as much privacy as possible, but also as much light as possible. And so that resulted in a lot of indirect daylighting and then a lot of indirect nighttime light. So the goal is during the day, we really don't have to turn any lights on to use the house. And at night, we don't have to see light bulbs in our eyes. So privacy, you mean privacy from the street? Because exactly. Yeah. Because you're surrounded by houses and driveways and... Yep, right. totally. So other alley houses in DC, they built right up to their lot lines and they even sunk down. There's a 20 foot height limit on alley houses in DC. And so some builders are sinking the ground floor down a few feet, but it makes for these spaces that are adjacent to the alley and that are sunken lower than the alley. And so people walk by your house and look down into your living space. And it's very uncomfortable for the people that live in them. So here we have no views from the alley into the house. We have huge glass sliders and windows, and we don't have to worry about blinds or curtains or anything. Another cool feature of the fence, when the light shines on the fence sometimes, the fence catches the light and it lights up the interior space more than it would be without the fence at all. So we're actually creating, through reflection, more light than we would have otherwise. So we use it as the screen porch. We also use it sometimes just by opening the doors and not having to sort of pull screen doors shut. It's nice as a sort of extension of the house. So this is the wood that was cut down from the- Piece of land that we built the house on. Because you had to cut it. Just a... We had, and it was a scrappy tree. It was, okay. it was a weed tree that was growing up in between the cars that were okay. broken down here, okay. so. <laughs> nice. Kind of fun on the feet on this, right? Oh yeah, it has makes some nice noises. Hey, Momo. Right. So these were, I think, $150 for all these pavers, and it's just sort of usable and durable. How much work? A few hours. <laughs> it's just really nice how luxurious this feels. It doesn't feel like some you know, earth house that's sort of trying to be, try to be something. It's actually just really, it almost feel like a spa or, mm -hmm. you know. It's not granola. It's natural without being granola. We wanted to use natural materials in a way that people in DC would appreciate, hopefully. And so this was built for a very economical cost per square foot. But if you're willing to put a little bit of time and patience into wood, it can be a very luxurious material. 
And again, we have more wood. It's just everything. Yeah. So the kitchen cabinets are the same poplar plywood, and everything is as simple and natural as possible. So IKEA cabinets that okay. we built custom faces for. The dishwasher, similarly, just has a panel face. Conventional dishwasher, conventional fridge, freezer. That's just great. Simple yeah. wood facing and simple brass handles. All the places that you touch throughout the house on the inside are brass and on the outside are copper. So we wanted to keep that consistent. Sinks throughout the house are made from brass and they came from Morocco. They were pretty much the same price as aluminum sinks. And then of course we have the mesh net above and the mesh net lets us bring light down from the skylight above and still use the, the space as a play space. It's great and it has allows for light to come in, but because it's white, it often catches the light and makes the space feel brighter than it would feel without the net at all. So because we use the net here, we decided that it's what we should use for the stair. So it's the sort of railings and fall protection for the entire stair as well. Made by a, a catamaran net company. So this is a, a, a big couch bed, guest bed. I don't know what the inspiration was. We like to be comfortable and we like to lounge around. So, you know, you can remove the middle segment or slide it around and make a more conventional sort of U-shaped couch. And with a baby, we just sort of like to keep it together and use it as a big, big surface. Is this your space? This is Murray's play space and his little library shelves and he hangs out while I work from home. Mama. Mama. Where are you going? Go play. Yeah, go play. There you go. There's your laptop. This is sort of the home office corner and Yeah, it's great how it's so open. I mean you really feel it here. Like yeah, so this whole sort of um, bar has access, visual access to the TV, and the TV can swivel. So the kitchen gets the TV, the kitchen also gets the dining room and the screen porch, and then the living room has the sort of office and the kitchen. So in each of the spaces as we use them, we can, the other of us can be in the adjacent spaces and we can all sort of coexist and um, still have the space we need. Great desk, by the way. It's a vintage desk from the 19-teens, and it can be adjusted, and it can be raised and lowered, so I can sit at it, it can be tilted, it can be flat. So this is like a little side yard that I use while I'm working, and there's a little chair out here, the rain chains, and it's just uh, like these other little side yards, a space to sort of expand a little and step outside. Oh, it's, it's very self-contained. Yeah. And you can't even see it from the apartment building next door. It has actually a lot of privacy. Yeah. Does it bother you that there's not more yard? Like you feel like you need yard for anything? Do you... No. A lot of people around here use their backyards for parking and they might have a few steps in the front for a front yard. So it's not that much different than a normal row house in DC. And as you'll see upstairs, our hall is pretty big and we use that sort of like a backyard. So it's nice to have these little side yards that each serve their own function. These are natural materials and they're not conventional, but they're off the shelf. We wanted to eliminate unnatural materials. So like cork is a good example. Cork had a huge presence in the United States until World War II, at which time the Germans started torpedoing our shipments and we had to create alternatives like plastic and foam. So we invented these artificial products that we now use for building materials because they're still around. But when possible, we like to sort of revert back to natural materials. They're always gonna be healthier, I think. Here we have our coat closet, hiding underneath the stairs. And then if we keep going around, we have our pantry under the stairs on the kitchen side. And then on the other side, we have a taller closet. This is sort of our substitution for a basement, which we did not build. That, that looks like a hard fold. <laughs> it is. <laughs> a little easier when it's less crowded. You want to take us upstairs, Momo? Okay. Yeah? Okay. Up we go.
Okay. Come on. As we go up, you probably feel a breeze and it's because the sky, two of the skylights above us are operable. And so we're able to sort of pull air from the house up. And when it's really nice out, we'll just open all the doors and pulls all the air up and out. Wow. This feels like really the center of the house. This is the center of the house and in some ways it's the backyard. Yeah, so we spend a lot of time up here and we get a lot of light and you know, we can be in here very early in the morning. We can be in here until late in the evening. And this is sort of the same shape or scheme as the Roman domus with the atrium in the middle. And with Roman domuses, there are often sort of side yards and small courts that are enclosed by tall walls and fences. And so they were dealing with a lot of the same issues that we're dealing with here in terms of privacy and relation to sort of street and a frontage and things like that. So the primary bedroom area is a sort of blackout bedroom wing instead of just blackout blinds. We knew that we wanted to sleep well. Um, this bedroom wing is on the north side of the house, so we don't have any windows. We have this big west facing sliding door with a, a private screen balcony so that we can have a little reprieve area just to ourselves. You really feel like a part of the neighborhood here. Totally. I mean, you can see up here how much visibility we would be getting if we didn't have privacy in mind. So alley houses typically are uncomfortable for the inhabitants because of all this visibility. But it's the sort of placement of windows and having big windows downstairs and a big skylight with small windows on the second floor that give us the privacy that we need. So here again, we're using scraps. These pickets are the scraps from all of our roof framing. and. We like to find ways of using the surplus creatively so that we don't end up with the surplus. And then we can close the blackout blinds to make the room very dark. The wall that separates the bedroom from the rest of the house is clad in cork. And then all of the interior partitions in the house are stuffed with the scraps of the cork cladding from the outside. So wherever possible, we try to reuse scraps and the cork in the wall cavities deaden the sound and just makes the whole house a lot better sound insulated. Wow, um, it's, it feels really calming in here and just like qu quiet and yeah, yeah, it's nice. Yeah, this wing is always the space where we end up standing around spending the most time talking. This darker sort of more mysterious area just feels calm and it's relaxing and it's comfortable. And it, it, this is a, a paint or This a... is also milk paint. It's paint made with the proteins of milk. And so it's what farmers used to use for their fences. It's what, you know, people have been using for thousands of years to sort of coat and seal things to give them a whitewash. We love milk paint because it's water-based. So on the BAM core, the water draws the grain of the wood out a little bit. And then the black, it's not a petroleum-based coating on top of the wood. It's really like a pigment. It makes the wood black. The next space is a bedroom in the closet. Again, the goal is turning on as few lights as possible throughout the day, having as much um, indirect light as possible at night. So, you know, in the closets, we have lights that turn on as soon as you open them. and all the light throughout the house it's a warm temperature so that your eyes can be relaxed then it provides the light that we need there is space there i mean you you can just yeah you know it's... a lot of closets we actually when we moved here we we moved all of our stuff in and we thought we had enough space and then both of us had forgotten that there were also these compartments <laughs> so then we had all this new closet space that yeah. we didn't realize so just really easy. We did use MDF. We tried to make them economical. And so this space can be closed from the bedroom and closed from the bathroom and used, you know, when someone else is sleeping. And then the bathroom too can be used separate. We have a big shower tub sort of unit. It's like, wow, it's a real experience. Yeah. So we 
covered the walls and many of the surfaces in the bathroom with a product called Micro Cement, which is a multi-layered, very thin, cementitious product that can be waterproof. We put a little texture into that Micro Cement so this type of light catches it. And that gives us the sort of continuous dark black uh, look and we wanted again the black so that our eyes are able to relax and it's just the light that we're seeing and not all the reflected light. And then again everywhere everything that we touch is usually brass but when possible we sort of like for the fixtures to recede a little bit too. It's interesting how you have a black shower but it's so light. And that gets back to a sort of Japanese understanding of light and dark and them being a balance and there being a harmony between them. If it's all light, then you don't see light. You're just sort of blinded. So you need the darks and you need the shadows to emphasize the lights. And especially today in this sort of hazy gray day where there isn't much light, when you have darker spaces that let your eyes relax, you can appreciate the light. We love shadows and we love what black can do to emotions and the mood of a space and of the people inside the space. A background that lets life come to the forefront. I mean, we so often play with Murray in the closet and he looks in the mirror and he's really into it and we bring him into this tub and the light on him glows when we're in this black space and if we go over to one of the white spaces, it's just sort of bright everywhere. So you're able to sort of highlight light and texture and color through a black background in a way that you aren't able to in brighter spaces. I can actually brighten this a little bit. Oh, wow. Hot. And so, yeah, this is the bathroom space, a custom concrete countertop, brass sinks. We can use the mirrors for different effects. So this is how I shave and it's all, off the shelf, except the sinks, off the shelf, simple products. You're using again the, the sinks. Yeah, the, the brass. And something that we like about brass for interiors is that in very low light situations, the shininess of brass catches any light that there is. So if we turned all the lights off in this space with the little light that there is, we'd still see all the brass pieces and then there's a small toilet room in here. You have room inside of your house. Yeah, we had thought about putting a usable roof deck on top, but the height limit in alleys is 20 feet. 20 feet on flat roofs is measured to the top of the roof. 20 feet on a pitched roof is measured to the midpoint of the slope. So here, 20 feet is the midpoint of the roof, we're able to get to 21 and a half feet at the skylights in the middle. So that's one of the reasons for a pitched roof is trying to get as much height as we can. And it means that the exterior ceiling heights are a little bit lower, but yeah. that's where it wants to feel a little more intimate. So this is um, Murray's nursery. This is the bathroom where we have a tub. We've also cut a little Claire story window above the tub so that we can bring light from the skylight down into the bathroom and then concrete countertops with brass sinks. Walls are? Walls are milk painted. Over the? Over BAM core. So that's why you see a crack here. This is the first sort of season of temperature changes for the BAM core. So we'll come back later on and fill some of the cracks because the building has adjusted its moisture content to the site. So it's kind of a living construction. Definitely. It? It takes a season or two for all of these wood building components to settle in and adjust to each other. Once they all find their relation to the humidity, it becomes a tighter construction, but it takes a little bit of time. So putting all these skylights in the middle here, was that, it looks complicated, um, but... It's really just a simple grid of four by 12s that we wove together and then we used two by 12s to trim it out. So the choice of this, so doing plywood instead of drywall, more expensive? More expensive, certainly. The materials were more expensive. It also requires more precision install and drywall is just super cheap. But drywall to us is one of the laziest materials. It's easy to install, it's cheap, it can get junked up and repaired quickly. But drywall off gases 
and it doesn't really work great unless it's painted and so you have to add toxins to make it work well when you strip it down and replace it it's not biodegradable and so for a house that we hope will be here for potentially centuries we think that not having junky drywall is well worth the investment because i think it looks so much better looks it better looks feels higher. better feels better it, it's warmer it's there's so many it breathes better it's when you touch it it feels better we have two mini splits in this house to heat and cool mm -hmm. and then all the other air movement is handled by a central energy recovery ventilator which controls the humidity and the dehumidification and the filtering and it does fresh air intake so that fresh crisp air it makes the house feel clean and it makes it feel healthy and that in conjunction with the wood and all the cork that we have inside the interior partitions it just feels better to breathe Can we go out there let's show him so we we tell him it's like a hammock and not like a trampoline he loves climbing on it uh -oh. Yeah. What inspired the net? It just seemed like a nice doubling up of uses for the space. Is it regulated? It's created as a floor, just treated or nothing. Or it's a floor. floor. Yeah. Maybe for our inspection, I think we had a guardrail up, so it was treated as an atrium. But and we have this too, which I mean, he doesn't. He goes on and off by himself now. But when he was a little bit younger, we would use this as like a gate. We get a lot of direct light, we get indirect light throughout the day, um, and then the mesh net really uh, brightens the space sometimes, catches the light and brightens everything up. The evening light, it can totally change the atmosphere of the spaces. So here it's drawing your attention to the structure, to the grid of the beams and the columns, and yeah, it makes the, the space feel more internally focused. And light's another one of these materials where if you're a little patient and you're a little creative, it can become a luxury. I mean, we're just getting started with this. There aren't many houses that are built to be healthy. There are plenty of houses that were built as natural houses, like Frank Lloyd Wright was a natural architect. But being explicit about the health of the occupants and about the health of the places that the materials came from, that's relatively new. Okay. using me, materials right and back. having priorities that don't cost money but result in a better way of living. It just requires a little bit of thought. You have a lot of elements. You are not afraid of showing it. Why? Why do you think this can be a thing you can show? Yes. Yeah, we like honesty. So we're, we're not trying to deceive anyone and we're not trying to hide anything. We have spent a lot of time traveling and visiting old buildings and learning from old buildings. And when they're honest and when they use materials, how the materials want to be used, then they age well and they gain durability. But when you're trying to hide whatever, you're doing a disservice to the house or the building and your deception will eventually be revealed by time and by water and by air. Aww. Hey. <laughs> hey. We don't want to be embarrassed by any decisions that we make even long after we're gone. We want these houses to make us proud when we're gone. So they need to be able to age well without us. <laughs>